Hi, my name is Philip Worthen, and I'm going to be doing a webinar today on transitioning from the military into product management. To start, here's a quick overview of what I'm going to be covering. Uh, a little bit about me. I've had a very, um, very winding journey on going from the military into product management. It might be useful for some of you who are exploring different careers and seeing um, uh, what a path was that got me from the military into product management. Then I'll go over um, some product management basics. Just want to level set, make sure everybody's kind of like operating on the same ideas um, before jumping into what are the product manager skills that you're going to need? What are the military skills that you've already um, developed? And where's the overlap? Uh, and more importantly, where's the gap? What I'm hoping to do is help you bridge that gap, give you some um, ideas on what you might be able to do to fulfill those um, skills that are kind of necessary in the product manager world, but you just need that experience and, and that kind of um, portfolio. So we'll go through different, different things that you can do to build yourself up so that you look like a better candidate out on the job market. Finally, uh, we'll go over some product resume bullets uh, that might be useful for you as you're going around and um, applying specifically for military to product. I've had a lot of people reach out who are uh, struggling with how they can rephrase the things that they've uh, accomplished within the military, the skills that they've learned in the military, and take those bullets and then make them useful for the product manager world. So we'll go over a couple of examples, and then um, I've got a long list that you can screenshot and try to use for enhancing your own resume. So first things first, a little bit about me. Again, I had a winding path to getting into product management. I started in the Air Force. Uh, I was a logistics and supply chain officer stationed all over the world, um, you know, stationed out in Europe for a couple of years. I did a little bit in the Middle East. Um, some time in Asia, and again, some more time down in South America, South Florida. Great experience. Uh, knew that that wasn't really what I wanted to do for my whole career. So after my time in the military, I got out and went and got an MBA. While I was getting the MBA, uh, I had a really good idea with a friend about how we can automate some financial processes. So we decided to start a fintech startup. Unfortunately, our idea came about three years too late and there were some very big players in the space that had already um, poured enormous amounts of money into their products. Uh, and we ultimately decided to make the decision to fold our startup so that we could pursue other things. Uh, after that, after graduating from the MBA, I went and got into management consulting, doing um, strategy and transformations kind of for various clients across the technology, um, biotech and finance space. While I was there, I uh, had the opportunity to consult on a couple cases that were new product launches. And that's where I really got my product management feet wet, um, understanding the product manager life cycle or the product life cycle. And the software development life cycle. So going through those uh, gave me the exercise that was necessary to make the jump from that into product management at Amazon, where I've been for the last couple of years. I'm currently a senior product manager technical on the AWS side in something called Elastic Compute Cloud um, EC2. And we basically help customers get virtual machines, uh, scale them up and scale them down as they need. So starting with defining product management. Product managers, um, they pretty much own the entire cycle of the product. Uh, sometimes you'll hear it as like product managers are the mini CEOs of the product. Um, that's one way to think about it. What I like to think about it is the cycle that's on the bottom of the screen. So 
what a product manager is doing is they're using a lot of different techniques, different uh, methods in essentially figuring out how to best pursue each of the topics that are on the bottom. They're going to start by trying to understand what is the market need? What are people's pain points? What is out there? They're going to talk to customers. They're going to do everything they can to understand the market, the current market needs before they do any of the other product life cycle. Understanding your customer and obsessing about what your customer wants um, and even needs is probably the most important part about this throughout the entire th throughout the entire life cycle. It's it's going to be so important. Once you um, once the PM starts to understand what they need, they're going to go through the development life cycle. Again, depending on the product that you're building, um, either you're manufacturing or you're doing some kind of like software service. Um, you have your own life cycles for development and there are different tools and there's different methods and there's different ways to really solve this. Um, but ultimately what you're doing is you're building the thing that you want to sell. Okay. And once you have that thing, um, now you got to take it to market. Uh, a lot of times this is running in parallel where you're trying to understand how much can you pay for it? Um, or how much can you charge for it? Uh, what are your expenses going to look like? What is the target customer that you're trying to reach? How are you going to inform them? Like, how are they even going to know that your thing exists to go buy it? And there's a lot of different things and tools, different methods that go into the go to market phase where you're trying to understand how do I, I've already built the thing. How do I get it in front of people so that they want to buy what I've built? And then once you put it out on the market and people actually like start looking at it, start playing with it, start buying it, you're going to get that feedback. And that feedback is super important for improving your product, right? Um, a lot of times when you go to market, you're going with your, what we call a minimum viable product. At Amazon, we use the minimum lovable product. But what you're taking to the market is the basics so that you can start to get real feedback from customers. Um, before you put it in their hands, a lot of it is just notional. A lot of it is just like theoretical. Yeah, sure. I'd like this or I'd like that, uh, features, but nobody's actually committed money to the thing they, they're not invested emotionally in your product. Um, and when you start to get that feedback, it starts to pay off, um, dividends in making your product, uh, taking it to the next level. And in this life cycle, um, sometimes you have to start considering, you know, and I, am I nearing the end of my product's usefulness on the market? You know, is it too old? Is it not meeting the needs? Is there something else out there that's newer, that's cheaper, that's better? Um, do I need to start thinking about how I'm going to remove this from the market? Um, if it's, you know, something where you're providing services after you've sold it, so think of something like um, software updates for your phone. Um, you know, if you're removing that service, that's a really big deal to some people who are going to continue to use that phone. So you got to think very thoughtfully of how you're going to go um, about actually removing that. So you're not investing your own resources into sustaining that product. And, you know, all, all of that combined is really what a product manager is doing. Usually all these are going, you've got, all these streams running in parallel at any one time they're they're going constantly and uh, you're trying to juggle all of this um, at the same time for multiple different products now um, there are a bunch of different ways that you can uh, do all of that product manager life cycle that we were just talking about in the last slide and so what I want to do is just throw some um, common product management tasks and artifacts out there uh, to help you kind of be a little bit more familiar about what they are. And so essentially what all of the things that you do as a product manager, you're trying to document what everybody is saying or what you're thinking so that it's down on paper, it's, it's listed somewhere that you can come back and reference. You're trying to communicate that information out to as many people as possible 
um, as fast as possible and as efficiently as possible. And then you're trying to align everybody who's either working with you or the target customer um, and using these PM artifacts um, is really how you're going to get success in the long run, you know, year after year after year, um, having these, these things, these tools, these methods to fall back on um, and contain all the details that are necessary for um, making sure everybody's kind of like moving forward in the right in the same direction. And so uh, a lot of things that you'll um, some common some common terms that you'll run across is going to be things like the product roadmap and the product prioritization, the backlog, sprint planning. The roadmap is really like, as it sounds, you're just planning out, showing where the, the map of what you're going to be doing. Um, the prioritization really helps when you're talking with stakeholders who wanted something, um, but they're not going to be getting it in the first release or any release. Um, and you use that prioritization to show and walk people through and say, hey, you know, this is um, th this is the trade-offs that we had to make. And here's the prioritization framework that we used so that we can um, demonstrate that there's other higher value things that we need to be pursuing for this next product iteration. And then those things that don't make it onto that first, uh, onto that first development phase, you know, you put it onto your backlog and then that's where the things that you're not working on kind of sit and they're just waiting for the next available opening. Um, you go through sprint planning, uh, you'll do your market analysis, you'll, try to figure out what your product metrics are going to look like. Um, you'll define the requirements. You'll reach out to customers for stuff uh, we like to call user stories. You'll go through something called wireframing, which is building like the most uh, simple model of what you're trying to explain. You, you can draw it out on a, a pen and a piece of paper. Um, there's some tools online, but uh, wireframing can be as simple as that. Uh, you're going to try to define like how you're going to do your research, your user research, your user testing, and then your go-to-market strategy. Artifacts are really just around like that documenting, communicating, aligning. Um, and I think there's a couple other uh, videos out there that will go into more depth uh, about this. If you download the slides, it's in the notes, um, some more information on those. So some good product manager skills to have um, is really like you want to split it into the high level and the low level and what's in between. So at the high level, as a product manager, you're setting the vision for where that product is going to go. You've spoken to customers. You, you're the one who's reaching out to people, trying to understand what the pain points are and what people are trying to um what they wish they had a product that solved their problem and so that's where you come in you're setting that vision okay here's the thing that we're going to build and it's going to solve these problems and that's why people are going to pay us money and you're building that positioning that story that goes along with it like here's the why they're going to pay us money for this product and um try to try to navigate that path that's what we mean when we talk about high level um, product management skills. At the low level, the, that's gonna be your tactical um, tactical skills. And this is probably where as a military person, you're gonna need um, to beef up your, uh, your skills and experience. And we'll get a little bit more into how we can do that. But this is really just your technical depth you know, how technical on the product that you're building are you? How familiar are you with the technology? Um, how deep in the conversation can you go for software? It's, you know, coding and stuff like that. But for manufacturing or B2B, um, you might have other technical details uh, in logistics and supply chain. There's a whole other set of technical details that you need to be familiar with. 
you need to be able to dive into data. And this is something that, um, at least in my time in the military, we didn't really do, uh, but was go through actual databases and pull out information um, from there. And then you might have other things like negotiation, um, influencing, or trying to have these conversations with people to win them over to your idea. Um, at the mid-level, right, so high and low, uh, you're always going to be talking. You're always going to be communicating with your team, um, handling risk management. So, you know, the, the, the mark of a good PM is the ability to fluidly go from the strategic high level down to the tactical low level and then constantly just bounce back and forth. Um, high level for strategy and then you move into a call, you know, in the next hour and you dive into that tactical technical analysis where you're trying to really iron out just a very um, minute detail. Uh, and so there's actually a lot of overlap with military skills uh, here, where at the high level, you know, you're going to be going over that strategy um, in the military, you're talking command and control and how to plan for stuff, training and readiness, all that. But that high level, uh, strategic view will carry over into the product area. Um, things like command and control aren't as important, um, but influence is. And so it might be a little bit, you might need a little bit of a, a shift in your mindset to go from the military to the corporate world. Um, but uh, it's a smooth, it's a smooth and easy transition um, where you're basically trying to influence people um, in indirect means. And then again, you know, diving down into the low tech, um, tactical details, you know, as a military person, you understand, you know, your unit tactics, how to execute um, your operations. Uh, you, you're paying attention to detail. Um, there's some amount of diplomacy involved in what you're doing, especially uh, in the mil as the military becomes like this uh, global partner with different um, global organizations all over. Um, so really as a military member, or as a military leader, you're gonna be jumping from that strategic down into the tactical and then pulling up to go to another strategic um, uh, discussion. And so as I'm saying, there is a ton of overlap in skills. And so what I've put here on the screen is where I kind of personally see that overlap. Um, you have a lot of customer empathy, emotional intelligence, understanding. So like you are focused on the people that are around you. You understand how important that is. Now you just got to build a framework around that for when you're trying to gather feedback. Command and control is really just your cross-functional collaboration. Um, and it's an easy transition when you can understand what's going on behind behind the curtain um, and how other teams and other people um, are motivated into working on the products that you're trying to put out to market. Um, but essentially, you know, there's all these different skills that as a military leader, you've developed over the years and um, really your resumes and your portfolio should reflect these things um, that are very good to transition over um, into product management. Now, as I was kind of alluding to, um, there are some skill gaps and uh, you might be wondering why donuts? When I was searching for the word gap uh, online, these donuts popped up. So I decided to throw them on the screen. Anyways, um, so some of these common skill gaps are really those tactical detail um, level skills that, you know, unfortunately you can't get without operating in the environment for uh, an extended period of time. Now, you can pick these up super easy. Uh, everything that you've done in the military, I think, prepares you to, to constantly learn um, and just very overall be curious about like what what is out there and what do I need to know in order to 
get my mission done, kind of adapting and overcoming your challenges. And so, you know, all I can recommend is that whatever product niche that you're trying to go into that you really jump in there and try to get real hands-on experience for all these different um, technical knowledge and um, what the product life cycle that you're interested in, what it looks like, what the market looks like, that industry, um, understanding the pricing, how that works. Pricing can make or break you no matter how good of a product you have. Um, same with marketing. You know, if, if you don't have, if you haven't informed the customer that your thing exists and that it's something that they should buy and convince them to do that, then you could have the best product. And this, happen, and this happens a lot um, where you have a very strong product, but you have a bad channel of um, a bad sales channel uh, and you just ultimately can't succeed when that exists. And so here's really the, the skill list of all, the couple of last slides where you can see, you know, the military, and then you can see the um, product manager skills and kind of where that gap is. And so what you, what you want to do is you want to anywhere that there's a gap, that's what we're going to try to solve. That's what we're going to try to, um, build your skills up so that you can ultimately succeed in the long run. And I think the best way to do it is real world experience. And that might be a little bit uh, daunting, but it's not as bad as you're going to think it is. So first off, um, uh, probably one of the best ways is going to be internships or part-time work. Um, there are tons of companies, startups, smaller companies that are hiring, uh, that are looking for getting those skill sets. Um, they need someone who can focus on the product uh, itself and bring it to market. And so um, they would be more than happy to bring you on as a product manager uh, for this. So the trade-off is really like they'll they'll take someone who's less experienced, but uh, you know, you're really just building up your resume at that point. And so it's not the greatest source of income. Um, another thing that you can do is you can use degrees and courses to kind of show that, you know, on paper, I know what I'm doing. I know in theory, the things that I need to do. Um, but again, getting back to that number one point, there's nothing quite like the actual experience um, when you can point to a product and say, this is what I've built. Um, this is the thing that I that I've made. Now I will say that degrees and courses will help you get um, internships, part time work, full time work. Um, it, they'll help you get even you know like the top tier, everything that you can want. Um, so definitely worth it. Uh, there's industry newsletters, and those are really useful for keeping you know up to date with what's going on in the in the industry. Um, and that'll help you if, if you're reading these on uh, daily, you know, subscribe to a few of these newsletters. Um, they'll really help you uh, train your tongue so that you're speaking in the way and the language of that industry. And it will make your product uh, management experience a lot uh, more smooth when you already know like all the, all the technical jargon that they're going through. And finally, um, networking. So if you see any kind of like military uh, events that are slightly uh, adjacent to product management or launching a product, something like that, then definitely go meet people, talk about the products that you're launching, that you're trying to um, go through, the, the problems that you're experiencing, seek help, ask them for advice. That's probably the best way to learn and grow is, you know, reaching out at these networking events and uh, meeting people and then asking them like, Hey, I'm, I'm working on this product and this is the challenge that I'm having. You know, what would you do as a more seasoned experienced product manager? Great way to get feedback, um, actionable feedback. <clears throat> and so the whole point of that last slide is like building up your portfolio and building up your resume. And ultimately, while you're doing all that part-time work, while you're doing all those internships, while you're doing your degree courses and everything like that, right? These are the 
the skills that we're looking for in in industry, right? We want to see that you've led the product development. We want to see that you've done proper market research, um, you know, customer research or uh, product vision and strategy. Ultimately, what we're looking for is real life deliverable experiences. What have you brought to market? And so as you're going through all those experiences on the last slide, think to yourself, you know, am I, is the thing that I'm doing building to one of these um, skills? Is the thing that I'm doing actually bringing a product to market or is it just the educational um, self-improvement thing that I'm, I'm working towards and, and they can build on each other, but ultimately these are what you should be focusing on because these are what gonna, uh, these are the skills that are going to deliver results for you. <clears throat> and so what I want to do, um, one of the uh, feedback and pain points that I got um, was as a military person, I'm just really struggling with my resume. I'm just um, having trouble taking my resume and translating it into product manager language. And so what I've done is I've taken some um, military bullets that might that you might have if you were a like army platoon leader, okay? And then I'm trying to translate them into product language that will be useful for people in the corporate world who have no um, experience in the military um, or even just different service branches where they're not like in the Air Force, I'm not super familiar with the rifle platoon. So I might not know how um, impactful being a platoon leader actually is. And so what I want to do is just change the language to show what you're doing. So in that first example, you know, you're leading a team and you, you have um, some kind of result. And so in the product world, you're still leading that team, but now it's a team of managers, it's a team of individual contributors. That's what I see is. Um, and where, you know, you might have a decrease in some kind of uh, combat activity that might translate to like an increase in effectiveness in what you've been doing um, in that area. Again, for the second one, you know, training is so important in the military. And it can likewise be important in the corporate world. So um, you still implemented that new training program, which in, improved uh, team proficiency and performance. You know, in your military experience, it was to improve marksmanship. But ultimately, you know, you're helping get the team done uh, in a more effective manner. Uh, again, you know, you've done 20 combat patrols and you uh, were successful in capturing some high value targets. So, you know, you've led 20 successful operations events and, uh, you know, that resulted in 10 high profile success news stories. So you got to be a little bit creative with what you're thinking, but ultimately you got to show what you did still matters and there was an impact and then translating it into the language that we use in uh, the corporate world. So finally, um, here's a, like a really long list of military bullets and a really long list of what I've tried to translate them over into product um, bullets. So go ahead, screen, screenshot this, try to use it just to, um, they're probably not 100% correct, but uh, you're just trying to get through the um, challenge of doing that translation. Look for, look for these uh, as inspiration and, and how you might rephrase some of the things that, you, that you've been doing. Again, um, my name is Philip Worthen. I really appreciate that you took the time to watch this. Uh, hopefully it was helpful. Um, go ahead. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like about this. Um, if there were things that uh, I could kind of elaborate on, go ahead, let me know, and I'll definitely reach out and try to uh, provide that provide that feedback and provide that information that you're looking for.